Okay, I'm working back in the studio again today, um, and to be honest, it is frozen solid out here in Portland, Oregon, so there's nothing else I could be doing other than working in the studio today. So uh, we are sizing a very cheap sterling silver ring, um, and the reason being is because I just like it. Here is this ring, and we are going to size this ring because, well, frankly, because I like it. It's simple. Um, it is sterling silver. And I need it about size bigger than what it is. So I want it to fit my ring finger. And it won't get over my fat knuckle because of arthritis. So we are going to cut this puppy right here and then add a little to the shank of the ring. So here we go. So before I go any further, we are using Vigor Heat Shield. I think other companies make this stuff. So what this is, this is like a clay. And I'll be putting this on the ring, on the stone, because I don't want to remove the stone on the ring. So what I will be doing is putting this clay on the ring so that it won't overheat the stone and I don't want to have too much on the shank because I, I do want the band the shank the band to heat up and actually you know what I'm going to do first is cut it size it and then I'll know what kind of a gap that I'll need so we'll take this off real quick sorry I know that was kind of a false start take this stuff off. This stuff is pretty um, goopy. It gets pretty much everywhere. So I'm going to cut this ring first, put it on the sizer, size it, because it's going to be quite a bit larger. We're going to have a gap to fill, and then we will figure out what the gap is. Okay. Cheap, dirty, easy way of doing this is just cutting. So I just cut the, the ring I'm going to fit it on my mandrel, slightly walk it to where it's opened, and let that fit. Nope, a little bit more. i walk it a little bit more down the shank. This is the shank, huh? I keep calling it the shank, the band. Ah, that would fit nicely. So right there, this is what we need. Yep, that slides just over my knuckle perfectly. I will buff this out a little because when you use these snippers, one side's going to be a clean cut, the other one's going to have some silver pinched, basically. So I want to make sure that that is flat so that when I put my extra piece of sterling in there, it's not going to have a dip or I'm not having to fill it with solder. So let's do that first. Okay, I'm going to get both sides actually. Now I have, I do not have any half round wire to kind of match this. This is actually kind of a square band, but I do have a round wire that's nearly identical in size. It just needs to be smashed down a little bit. So I will hammer this lightly with a hammer just to get this flattened ever so slightly. And then we will use this round wire. Smashy, smashy with my trusty hammer, my ball pain hammer. Okay, we don't want to go too flat. Okay, I think 
this will work. I just needed a little bit of it flattened off ever so slightly. It might be a little too wide for the ring, but we shall see. Okay, that actually looks really good. So, that will be my little piece that extends my band. That looks really good. Okay, so now time to cut this puppy. Um, that's such a small piece, it's going to be a pain in the butt to cut and to hold on to, but we will see how that works out. Okay. Okay. Let's see if that was a little too big. Slightly too big. Just the hair needs to come off. So we'll cut this end. Let's see. Okay, over to the Dremel we do go because I only have a small little bit left. And I want to make sure it's going to fit as perfectly as it can in this band and not be seen. So I want to get these edges off and all the stuff on my hands. This is from the clay. This is what happens when it dries out. So I just want to sand this on both ends so that it fits neatly into this gap here. Okay. Too big still just by hair having it a little too small is better than a little too big because I don't oh that fits look at that okay so we have our piece okay so now back to the heat shield and putting it on the ring and again, I don't want too much on the band because I do want the band to heat up so that it accepts my piece. So the problem that you have with the heat shield, if you were to cover the heat shield all up in here in the band area, the band won't get warm enough to accept the um, solder. And so you want to use this just enough to protect the stone, but not too much so that the band doesn't heat up or accept heat. Because you can make life very difficult if you do it the other way. So this is ready to go. And because I don't have a lot of precise tools, this is usually what I do is I level the ring out on one of my kiln shelves so that it is flat and I have it supported right here with a bent up piece of metal and here I will take the camera off and show you. If we come down here you see that this is flat to the surface and so that's what I'm talking about in regards to flat. So when I solder this this little piece here can just fit in nicely and I can solder it on the table. And then once the solder adheres to it, I'm going to move this piece up as it's getting heated. So sounds a little difficult, but we will try it. Okay. I'm going to run my fan because... I don't want stinky exhaust in the space that I'm working in. I've got Grandpa's trusty propane torch that I'm using.
not that big. But just a hair of flux on that. probably did take on some heat underneath there um, and cold flashing it really with like cold water actually might crack the stone because it's a cheap cubic zirconia uh, right now though I think I can dunk it a little bit more in water get it totally cooled off and we will open 
this up like a present. Let's get this stuff off of here. See if we saved our stone. Ah, I hate getting this junk all over the studio. It's kind of like soldered to the piece, right? Okay. Get a little bit more water on it. Take a little bit of a towel to it. Put some water on it. We're going to take a towel to it. Wipe it off. See if we saved our stone. Oh, yeah, that looks really good. Okay, we saved the stone. Yeah, that looks nice. Okay. So, yeah, it really does take a minute to clean all this stuff off. So I'm going to take this into the house, put some soap and water on it, get this stuff cleaned off, and then we'll come back and buff this out, grind it down to where it's not noticeable, hopefully. Um, yeah, and we've got ourselves a ring. So if you've seen some of my videos before, I actually do all of my grinding and grinding in a fish tank. Um, that is to keep debris and whatnot um, from being floating around in my studio too much. Um, but for the sake of this video, I'm doing all the grinding above, so I've got a mask on. Uh, so this is the ring. So I have a lot of grinding and whatnot to do to get some of the solder because there's solder buildup on this. Uh, but let's hope once we grind and buff this down, we actually will not see any kind of ledges or any difference in the material. We shall see. Ooh, there goes a snow plow. Wow, first one I've seen all day. Now I need, it does not, you can't really tell on the outside, but on the inside, I can still see a bit of debris and junk that needs to be taken down. So I need to move to a much finer buffing wheel and one that will go on the inside of the ring. And so we're going to a different head. This guy is a much finer wheel. Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay. One thing you want to be careful of when you're sanding the band on the inside is that you're not sanding it so much so that you're actually creating an issue with the size. So for me, that still works really well. It's a little loose. So it could be a little bit smaller. Actually, does it fit on this finger? Yes. So, we will have it go on that finger. Ugh. Because it fits over the knuckle much better. But look at that. So we're going to go buff this. And I think I can see a little bit of the where the band was put in. Right about there, there's a bit of a a gap from the solder and you can see it just barely but for now that looks actually really nice so we're gonna buff this out so let's take us to the big buffer okay again this is me cheaping out a little bit i inherited this buffing wheel from um my mom um from my adopted mom and she was a glass cutter and so it's got a, a glass cutting wheel on one side or a grinder, glass grinder, I guess is what it is. And then it's got the buffing head here. You can change out the buffing and the grinding head and do whatever you want with it really. But it's not a very powerful machine. It's pretty lightweight. So it works out for the application that I want to work for. This is, a, this is compound I got from Harbor Freight. This is a pretty rough compound, so it will shine this up very nicely, but it also will take off a lot of silver. So you just have to be careful about how much you use of this. Or how much you buff a piece with this. As you can tell sometimes this will take it and spin and of course eat your piece so salvaged from back and beyond from it flipping we're gonna try this again indeed you can hardly tell when you look at it from here you can see a bit of a bump here so you can see where it was soldered in but from the outside ooh la la look at that yeah you can see just where it was widened but you know what when you're wearing it no one's going to be able to tell and that was the point the stone looks great. It didn't damage the stone, so I've got me a ring. Very cool.